David, let's go. Today's podcast, we're going to talk about the big money is made in buying real estate because of appreciation. Appreciation. You know, as we look at all our businesses and all the things that we do and all the things that we buy and, you know, like growing the sales business and the real estate business, and then we look at the business of owning real estate. The big money seems to be made in the appreciation of the real estate. Right. The, the, more, the more properties you own, the more opportunities you have for those values to go up. And in 10 to 15 years, you can literally find yourself in a retirement position. Right. Because if you buy a property every single year, you save, 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 you find a down payment, you buy this property 20% down, whatever it may be. It may cash flow or it may not cash flow, but eventually, not only will it cash flow five to 10 years down the road, you got so much appreciation that it's, it's gonna be crazy. And I think actually what would be valuable is to share some of our real estate uh, deals that, and how much money we made. So yeah, would that be valuable? Uh, I don't know that, that we're gonna get have time to get into all that right now. But I think the lessons would be valuable, right? The lesson that number one is, you know, at the end of the day, you will not, it's not just gonna fall in your lap if you buy real estate. It's kind of a shit show all the way to the top. It is, it is. And I'll, I'll give an example anyway. So okay. in 2015, we bought a condo in Chelsea. Mm -hmm. It was uh, 187,000. Everybody's like, don't buy a condo in Chelsea. Don't buy a condo in Chelsea, right? Mm -hmm. We sold that two years ago for 350,000. That's approximately like 167,000 in appreciation. The whole time running it, managing it, dealing with the condo association was a shit show. But time made that a lucrative investment. Right, so one reason that real estate is big money is leverage, right? Real estate allows you the use of leverage, meaning you can control a large asset with a relatively small amount of your own money. So let's, I guess, give another example. We have another property that would be a four family, right? We have a three family. But you buy this property, let's say the property is worth a million, you only buy it with 200,000, you sit on it long enough and now it's worth 1.5 million. So you got 500,000. So, so this is the example I gave the other day, which the finance guy didn't like, but that's okay. So what he's saying, like if you had 200,000 and you put it in the stock market, right? Mm -hmm. And it appreciates at 10%. Mm -hmm. Right, so two hundred thousand times ten percent—that's two forty. You'd have next year. Yep. On the million-dollar real estate, hypothetically, if it appreciated the same amount, what's appreciating is not the two hundred thousand that you put in; it's the one million-dollar asset that you have. I got it. And that's why it compounds a little bit crazy because you're not putting in the million dollars to get a hundred thousand back. That that hundred thousand appreciation of ten percent. You, you you actually can put as little as 5% down. All right. And which it, is 50 It grand. is work. I just want to stress the fact, like, none of this shit is falling on your lap. You're going to have to put in the work and the effort and the elbow grease and all the, you know, like, we had a tenant that didn't pay us for 15 months at the tune of 25000 that is owed to us, plus the court, plus all this nonsense. There is trouble. Plus, when he moves out, you have to move his stuff out. You have to put it in storage. You have to renovate the unit. Yeah. So you, you're looking at it, like if you're looking at it day to day and the headache and the fact that we just mentioned 85000 of a loss, you really have to think long term for it to be worth it and yep. worthwhile. Now you got to think bigger picture. Let's continue and try to push through this pretty quickly. But the big money is made in real estate because the appreciation just sets you straight. If you bought enough real estate 20 years ago, sat on it long enough, the end of the story would be you are so much more richer because the values went up. So that's the end of so the podcast. But if you want to continue listening, it's an inflation hedge. Real estate is often considered a hedge against inflation as property values go up and rental income tends to increase over time, keeping pace or out, per, outpacing inflation. So what that means basically is everything's the cost of everything is going up. 
but so is the cost of your rental income, right? Because mm-hmm. obviously the, mm-hmm. the rents that tenants pay go up and the real estate is appreciating significantly, right? So the jug of milk may go up instead of five dollars, it's like five fifty, but your real estate instead of five hundred thousand, your condo is worth five fifty. Right. And now inflation's huge because they're trying to tame it, but inflate it's been a thing for all these years. Real estate has been outperforming significantly. Now Three would be supply and demand. Limited supply of land and growing population create a natural appreciation in property values over time, especially in high demand areas. Absolutely, supply and demand is everything. Meaning like if you bought a condo in downtown Boston where the zoning laws are so strict, there's people moving in, but you cannot find more land to build more condos, right? right? So it's just what's there. Because of that, people used to buy these places for 20 to 50 grand that are now a million dollars today. Number four, improvements and renovations. Making improvements to a property can increase its value significantly, allowing values over time, especially in high demand areas. So I'll give an example, you know, you can buy a, and you can do this at a big scale, like syndication to a small multifamily type of deal, right? Yeah. So in a syndication, you could buy a property and a building and develop it for 10 million. And in two to five years, that thing could be worth 15 million. So you just went up 5 million by forcing the appreciation and making it better. Let's say you spent 2 million on cleaning it up, whatever. You can take a smaller, like three family, buy it for a million, clean it up for let's say 400,000, except now you sell each unit for a million dollars, getting you another 1.5, 1 million in profit. So you can force the appreciation by making improvements and renovations. Yeah, and that's whether you're doing a flip or a hold, like an example would be, we bought a condo, uh, another condo happened to be here locally in North Andover, and we renovated it, because nobody would buy it and it couldn't qualify for financing because the kitchen was gutted, the bathroom was gutted. So David went in there, fixed everything up, and then we sold it. But because we did all of the work and it was nice and new, somebody else would pay a premium for that as opposed to just waiting and letting time do its course. We did the renovation to make the value significantly higher. Number five, tax benefits. This is a thing that you don't think about until you start really making money and then you realize, man, I'm spending a lot of money on making my money. This is the biggest thing there is. Real estate investors can benefit from tax deductions such as mortgage interest, property taxes, and depreciation, which can help increase overall returns. When we learned about depreciation, it blew our minds because this is the, the craziest thing, right? When you buy a piece of property, the government lets you depreciate that over 27 and a half years, right? So if you do a straight line depreciation, you take the value of the home, subtract out the land, divide that by 27 and a half years, and you could offset your taxes by that amount. Meaning it goes, if you're making it, if you're a high revenue income producer, like some people are, and you hear, oh, this guy makes millions, but he doesn't pay taxes, it's because he buys real estate every year and he uses that depreciation. And taxes are one of your biggest expenses in business. Right, and you can use real estate to leverage some of that and maybe offset some of your tax liabilities. Now, next next thing would be forced appreciation, which kind of covered that, but investors can actively increase the value of a property through renovations, upgrades, and better management leading to a higher return when the property is sold. Other ways to do that too is subdividing lots or seeing somewhere that's a double lot, something where you can improve that wasn't there before. And another idea for that is also increased value, right? So say you might have a multifamily, you're gonna convert it to condos or farmland to single family homes, whatever that may be. Yeah, or you could buy a a bank that's not a bank anymore a small bank but let's say they have a big parking lot and then you go to the town you make your plans takes you about a year and a half to two years and then you can develop 25 to 30 units in that parking lot which will give you a significant return that project could take you five years but what else are you doing you know like on top of your work you could be doing stuff that is get, getting you a crazy return through your this real is getting estate. me excited i want to do another deal yeah Long-term investments, 
which is number seven, real estate is typically a long-term investment and over time properties tend to appreciate in value, especially when located in desirable areas. Look, it doesn't matter what we say. It doesn't matter what we learned over time. Simple as this, any property in, well, for now we'll just say United States, any property in the United States, any property in a, in a, like a, we're in Boston, so any property that's like high value state, right, which would be like you pick your top states. If you bought a property here 10 years ago, if, you, if your family bought a property here 20 years ago, 30 years ago, those properties are so much more money and they've brought in money over the years while your family's owned them. But no, but I haven't seen one property that is as uh, inexpensive as it was 10 years ago or 20 years ago. Or 30, right. You know, even when markets correct themselves, like we had a correction in 08, 09. And before that, in 06, 07 was the peak. People thought that was the peak. Then we had this crazy correction. Every single home today in property is worth more than it was in the peak of 07. So even though there's a peak after the valley, the next peak is always higher. So what David is saying, long term, it's gonna be worth more regardless, right? The only problem is like, maybe this year is a bad year for real estate. Yeah. And, but it doesn't matter 10 years from now. Which brings us to our last point, historical performance. Historically, real estate has been a solid investment with values generally increasing over time despite short-term fluctuations. So I think what Arthur and I learned from, from being two kids that just immigrated to America, not a lot of guidance, not, you know, we're gonna call it zero money, right? We were in the negative. <laughs> we're not in the right. negative now. But from being two kids that kind of learned it on our own, it wasn't like our dad was a mega, mega real estate investor in this country or the previous. And it's not like our one of our uncles came to us and was like, hey kids, buy real estate. And it's not like somebody took us under their wing and was like, hey kids, buy real estate. We just got into real estate sales and we started learning this and we're teaching this to you as much as we're learning it as actively and as consistently as we're learning things, we're trying to transfer that information to you. So like, yes, you can go from broke to no joke. And yes, you can become super wealthy over time and ch completely change your family tree and the way that you function and the money that comes into the family. But overall, the big money's made in real estate appreciation. That's where the money's made. Any last... Um, guidance or things yeah. that come to your mind that you I, th I think don't wait to buy real estate buy real estate and wait mm -hmm. all right i think also the best way to learn is to just get started you could always reach out to mentors like we never had anybody teach us but if you get some guidance there's somebody to tell you what to buy where to buy how to buy and you go and you jump into that you're going to be richer and then the other thing is, it's a, it's a, no matter what we say or you hear on Instagram or any other social media, it's a long-term game, right? It's not like, oh, I made a million dollars, I bought one property, I'm done. No, it's like, learn the business, buy, learn to manage. And we're not sitting here telling you all that, we, I mean, we do, we told you some of the bad things, but most people aren't telling you all of the negatives that come with being a real estate landlord or whatever. So it's not going to be a straight path to success. It's, it's gonna... not easy and there is a lot of struggle. There is a lot of um, struggle, but there, you know, in the tough times and the struggle times, that's where there's also could be a lot of opportunity for you. Just remember, it's not a one day, it's not a one day thing. Rome wasn't built in a day, but 10 years from now, you're going to be 10 years older and you could be 10 years older with a bunch of properties or 10 years older with no property. Yeah, like go to work, keep your regular job and then save save any extra money that you make and go ahead and invest it. And I think that you'll find yourself experiencing the real estate appreciation choo-choo train. And if you want to invest with us, you want to, you got a couple hundred or a million or 10 million or 50 million laying around, why don't you just give us a call? We'll go find some buildings together and we'll go buy some properties. If you want to look at any properties, please let us know. We're still very much actively involved in investing and in sales. If you have properties you want to sell, buy, invest in, you know who to call. Call this guy. Find your next home at dna-realty.com. And 
thank you very much. If you enjoy this, like it, share it, and hopefully it makes you change some things about the way you do with your life so you can become super wealthy. And then when you see us, you go, wow, I became wealthy. Or even better, you come to us and we kind of get wealthy together by helping you buy your properties. Let's go. Let's go.